Hey everyone. So I want to talk about what is something that is frequently overlooked and um, to be honest, kind of makes me want to pull my hair out when it comes to addressing almost everything when it comes to neurodeve neurodevelopmental disorders with kids. So whether that's speech issues, reading, writing, dyspraxia, poor coordination, right? Um, right, uh, you know, dysgraphia, all of those things, focus, ADHD, even autism spectrum and so forth. This is huge and it so often gets overlooked. It's uh, kind of insane. And when we address this, we see improvement. So um, it's really a case of, you know, parents are really frustrated with their child has multiple diagnoses and they feel like, you know, why does my kid have so much that's going on with them? I feel so bad for them. And uh, this is where you're gonna see no results if you're not addressing this layer, this deeper layer of brain development and just trying to improve the handwriting with more writing and trying to improve the speech with just speech therapy and tutoring, you know, reading with more tutoring. And all of those things are great, right action at the right time, as I always say. But um, today what I wanna talk about is how to identify if your child has poor cerebellum development and what you can do to improve that. So um, first of all, I just wanna say numerous studies in, the, in recent decades has found that the cerebellum at one point was just thought to be more involved with voluntary movement and motor function, all that type of stuff. And what it, they found is that the cerebellum is huge, it's like vitally important for learning. That movement and learning occurs in the same place in the brain, and that's the cerebellum, particularly procedural learning. Um, so it's absolutely crucial. And if we miss this piece and we don't address an underdeveloped cerebellum, which is like almost always a factor with kids who have these neurodevelopmental disorders or difficulties, then we're still, your kid is still going to be struggling and you're still going to be pulling your hair out. Um, so it's absolutely crucial to understand these multiple diagnoses that are not the exception. They are the norm that children have multiple diagnoses. And it's because it's all connected in terms of weak development of the different brain levels, which I talk about all the time. Um, and so the key is to address those lower brain levels, right? Address those primitive reflexes, which I've talked about before. They are foundational. They have to be addressed first. But I, I talk to a lot of parents who will tell me, well, we, we address primitive reflexes. I don't understand. Um, you know, we, we, and they've seen gains. They'll say we've seen gains. It was like, they've definitely improved and we're really happy more so than, you know, other interventions and so forth, but they still feel like they're not where they want their child to be. And they know their child can, can go further. And so primitive reflex are foundational, but they are not, they absolutely are not the end of the journey in terms of brain development. They are the beginning. So if you take that first step, it might be totally new territory. If you're used to like tutoring and speech therapy and all that other stuff, but it's just the beginning. And the other thing is that people will tell me we did primitive reflex integration. And I do feel I have to say this, you want to make sure that number one, are the reflexes really integrated? Because sometimes kids can override the screening. And I find uh, people tend to think they go to an OT, they'll tell me we went to an OT and they did reflex integration once or twice a week. Not enough. They need to do reflex integration every day. Um, and that's why with my program, we do that. And, you know, we have the weekly group coaching calls to ass assess how it's going. And the other piece of the puzzle is they have to um, do it. They, you have to make sure that they're doing it long enough and that we're not just going on the physical task, but we're also going on the symptoms. So there's definitely that piece with the primitive reflex integration. And we want to make sure that it's evidence-based reflex. There's some amazing people out there. I was one of them at one point and was not doing evidence-based reflex integration work. Um, and so you want to make sure that that's the case. So the other piece of the puzzle that you really want to know if you're feeling frustrated, you feel like you've done any everything is, you know, you have to do the primitive reflex integration. You have to look at brain hemisphere integration, right? To make sure the two hemispheres are uh, communicating well with another. And then you also have to make sure and assess is one side of the brain underdeveloped and one side overdeveloped. And this is often the case with kids who have disorders, whether it's dyslexia, ADHD, autism, speech difficulties, dyspraxia, dysgraphia, whatever the case may be. And once you work through all those layers, then you wanna get into cerebellum development, which so often just totally gets missed because it's great that more and more people know what primitive reflexes, but 
if we just address that brain level and we don't keep going up that ladder or peer, learning pyramid, then we're going to definitely not get optimal results. So you might be wondering at this point, oh my goodness, does my child have a weak cerebellum? How do I know? So I'm going to just give you some signs or a list of potential things that can happen when your child has a weak cerebellum. Let me know in the comments below, whether you're watching the live or the replay, are you seeing these things? Um, so just physical signs, first of all, are things like poor balance, getting car sick, um, being motion, uh, having dizziness or vertigo, um, poor posture. So posture is huge. And that's a very good clue that, um, not only they're often primitive reflexes with that, but also, um, that the cerebellum is involved. So poor posture, um, not a kind of normal, I hate that word, but gait. So in terms of how they walk, they might be clumsy. They might have issues with coordination, um, poor visual motor detection, um, so they might have a hard time like pursuing things with their eyes. They might even have nystagmus, um, right? Where their eyes kind of do a bit of a, like a, they're just not steady whenever they're looking far, far enough to the left or far enough to the right. And, and there's other forms of nystagmus that I won't get into today. Um, and they might even have nausea from certain, like just be more prone to nausea from certain situations like car sickness, obviously. And another physical sign is like low muscle tone. I see that a lot with my autistic clients, but um, you might see it as well with cl clients who just have learning disabilities or developmental delays, speech difficulties, all that type of stuff. Muscle tone is a huge indication of poor brain development. Um, and then cognitive learning, uh, speech, language issues, and so forth, that might be an indication that your child has poor cerebellum development are things like speech issues, difficulties with reading, difficulties with writing, sensory processing issues. Um, that's a huge issue. So if you have a kid who either doesn't realize how strong they are, or like it's just too, you know, they, they bang into other kids and realize how rough they are, or you might have a kid who's really sensory seeking, um, or you might have the opposite, which was my daughter, where um, like everything bothers them. Their socks, their the seams, the tags, too much noise, too, the brightness of the sun, whatever. Um, so it could go either way, whether their sensory system is over or underdeveloped. They might have poor working memory. So, you know, again, that's the cerebellum. Um, they might have poor visual memory, have issues with executive functioning. So that's the part of the brain that is so important for just being able to... Um, be organized and carry out actions and plan and have impulse control and all those types of things. So if you're listening to this going, oh my goodness, this totally sounds like my child. Um, well, this would that's what it's kind of meant to do is to help you understand cerebellum development is a huge piece of the puzzle when it comes to addressing learning and behavior issues. And um, I include speech and coordination and all of those other things that often don't get talked about enough. Um, and so you want to address that, but obviously you have to go up that learning pyramid the right way. If you just try to start working on cerebellum development before you work on, you know, the primitive reflexes, for example, first, um, and in my program, we start doing nutrition and gut healing first. You absolutely need to do that before you go into the other things. So if you want to learn more about my program, do book a clarity call. I'll post a link in the comments below for that. And uh, I'll post a link for the free starter kit. Um, with some basic exercises and so forth. So, um, and if you think this has been helpful and it makes, uh, you know, you know someone else who might, this might be useful to do share or tag or whatever. So thanks for watching everyone. Have a great day and do post your questions and comments below. I love to be able to answer and participate. Thanks.